Mm. Low key, just like Popeye. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everybody. Welcome to my channel. I'm Danny Deville, and it's New Year's Day. It's 2020, y'all. So I'm really excited, and I don't know about you, but I tend to use food as a way to mark great like milestones in my life. So grandma, my grandma from the South, makes um, fried chicken, cornbread, collard greens with smoked turkey neck, and black eyed peas with smoked turkey neck for New Year's Day. I'm on the West Coast now, and they're all the way in the East Coast. And I really kind of miss that tradition. Since I don't eat meat, I figured let's make a meat-free version. So we're doing black eyed peas, collard greens, and crispy quinoa cakes. I figured let's give it a little crispy texture. My dad loves, like apparently Popeyes came out with some black eyed peas last year around this time. He loves that recipe. So I wanted to see how close I could get to it. And I have a meat eater to give the true taste test at the end or at the beginning, wherever I decide to edit it. <laughs> but watch and enjoy. And I'd love for you to comment and let me know what your traditions are for New Year's Day, whether it's food related or fun related. I wanted to do hood rat stuff for my friend. Or relaxing. Mm -hmm. Uh, but be sure to subscribe. There'll be a lot more content to come. And yeah, be sure to like if you do have your New Year's Day tradition already on go. Happy New Year, y'all. Let's get it. The night before, I took two cups of dried black eyed peas and soaked them in water. Stuck two bay leaves inside just to enhance a little flavor. It's been about 12 hours. The beans are soaking. You can see the little foam. It's like the gases have released from the beans and made it easier to digest, uh, which is really cool. So I'm gonna switch the water out, continue to let the beans soak after that, and get ready to make some really good food in the morning. I'm super excited. So now we have most of the ingredients we need. We have our black eyed peas. They've been rinsed, some thyme, little tomato paste, jalapeno, green onion, red pepper, green pepper, garlic, some shallots, and some oregano. So I've rinsed and washed all of my vegetables. Let's get started. First I'm gonna chop off the bottom and the top. And then just remove all the seeds like this. And then you can kinda just slide your knife You know, first I was gonna use onions, and I don't have any. <laughs> no, I have a red onion in the house, but something told me to use these shallots. They give a great, like, kind of caramelized texture once they melt down, and I feel like they'll add some nice smokiness um, once they're caramelized to the black eyed peas themselves. And, um, yeah, I'm excited actually to use the shallots rather than regular onions. And besides, if you want a stronger onion flavor, onion powder. So just take some big old shallots. This is one. Um, it looks like two, but it was all in one, so I'm counting it as one. <laughs> so, but these are two, and I'll probably use like a third. You, you don't have to go looking for the flavor. It'll come and find you. <laughs> All right, one of my most favorite ingredients, garlic. <laughs> I like to add a little salt before I chop, that way the garlic stays in place. And who doesn't like salt? <laughs> All right, and then I'm gonna use a little bit of green onion, just cause I'm using those shallots to give it a little bit more of a zing. 
And I like to use both the white and green pieces. So I'm basically using the whole thing. Last but not least for the veggies is jalapeno. So before I chop up the jalapenos, I'm actually just gonna pop them in this pan. It's already been warming up. And I'm just gonna let them sizzle a bit. Get a little smokier. So now that your jalapeno has a little bit of a smokiness to it, go ahead and chop it off at the end. You can remove the skin if you want. I like to keep it on. And as you break down the middle, you'll see the seeds got nice and toasty. And just remove those bad boys. Unless you like having your tongue be on fire while you eat food. <laughs> if you want to put them in the oven um, to roast them, you absolutely can. I just wanted to save on washing dishes and use what I already have. Also save on energy, but you can absolutely that. All right, we finally have all of our veggies all ready to put into the pan. Yay! All the prepared chopped ingredients, your garlic, green onion, red pepper, green pepper, jalapeno. Add all those chopped veggies in there. I love a good colorful like pan to get started. You know what I mean? Oh, it's starting to smell good already. So now let's start to season, right? We'll do some salt. We'll do some pepper. I also added cumin, but somehow missed that footage. <laughs> Smoked paprika. Oh, beautiful, and as that's cooking down, you can smell that smoky flavor. Just gonna add a few squeezes of double concentrated tomato paste. It'll add to the earthiness that we want in our black eyed peas, especially when we like just kind of let the paste toast there. Start getting everything all incorporated together. So all of this is done on a medium to low heat. Um, we want them to kind of get nice and savory, but not super sweaty, if that makes sense. It smells amazing. Gonna add a little cayenne pepper. Gonna add some fresh oregano as this continues to cook down. And feel free to add, add dried. I just really love fresh herbs. A little fresh thyme. You know, in the Caribbean, West, a lot of West Indian cultures, we usually just put the sprig straight in. Not everybody wants to fish out their thyme at the end, you know? So take it and run backwards on the stem. All of the time will just kind of come off anyway, no matter how fresh it is. And then we just do a little fried parsley. As well. All right, everything looks beautiful. It's a great, beautiful base to add our black eyed peas in. And just get everything incorporated. 
Make sure that all the vegetables and herbs are mixed in with the black eyed peas so all the flavor is evenly distributed. Now is a time where you can add your vegetable broth, chicken broth. I'm adding water. <laughs> I usually add about twice as much water as I have beans. But looking at this, probably need to add maybe another half a cup to a cup. So just judge it based on how you, you how thick you like your gravy or how thin you like your gravy. One of the final things to add, some liquid smoke. Growing up, my grandmother, made black eyed peas with turkey necks. And as delicious as it was, I do not eat turkey anymore. You can also add some mushrooms if you would prefer to have your umami flavor come naturally. But I love adding liquid smoke to black eyed peas just to give it that smokiness that you would get from adding sausage or turkey or whatever. So I did not add salt after I added water, so I'm just gonna add a little salt taste everything make sure it's to your liking as of right now but you know as it reduces it will become saltier and um, just let this bad boy come to a boil put the top on we out here it'll take about an hour or two to cook depending on how long you've soaked your beans oh man I almost forgot gotta add bay leaf <laughs> After some time, the black eyed peas will start to come to a boil. Go ahead and cover them, let them work its magic for anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how long you soak them. So now we're preparing the quinoa for our crispy quinoa cakes. So twice as much water as you would have quinoa, add some salt, a little pepper. You don't have to worry about the water coming to a boil. And once everything's all in a pot together, just let it be. That's really all you need to do. We want the starchiness for our quinoa cakes. Mm. All right, let's do collard greens. Even though I'm buying organic with all these pesticides, it is important to thoroughly wash all of your produce. So is it true there's always going to be a little bit of bugs in the collard greens? Well, you know what? I like to wash them first. Right. That way you get the bugs out of your collards. So no matter how good you wash them, there's always going to be some bugs on your collard greens. Uh, is that what they say? Mm-hmm. Well, What's extra protein for you? <laughs> what show was that where the girl was... It was the Jackson 5 movie. And um, Angela Bassett was Katherine Jackson. And they were still kids. And I think it was Reby trying to make the greens, but she didn't wash them, so there were bugs all up in the greens. I don't remember. Oh, honey, did you wash these greens before you cooked them? Wash them? Honey, it's bugs floating all in this water. You gotta wash greens real good before you cook them now. Here, take this. I guess we start this over again. That movie, so I always wash my greens. <laughs> Like thoroughly. She's like, now we gotta redo them. And your father's coming home. We need to hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> so, because this is a vegan recipe, there'll be a slight twist on the original with smoked turkey neck and such. Here are the ingredients. So, I'm just gonna chop up some garlic. So, now red onion. You see how many collars I got and how much red onion I got? I definitely don't need that much. So, I'm just gonna have these and take the smaller half. If you're scared of crying, just rub some lemon down. Unless you're a G like me and you're not gonna cry. <laughs> okay. So the grapeseed oil was warming up as I was chopping the red onion and garlic, and now it's all ready to go. The, the thyme is like really peppery and it has a lot of great um, benefits, like anti-inflammatory um, benefits and such. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of thyme to the pot. So just gonna let these guys kind of cook down. They're already starting to brown on the outside, and then we can add our collard. So 
So once I finally add the collards to the pot, I'm gonna top them off with some smoked paprika, some liquid smoke, and apple cider vinegar. No, that's perfect. We want it to be overcooked. We want all these little rings to be popped because we're basically gonna take it off the fire now. I don't wanna do anything to it. I just want it, you see all that steam? I just want it to cool down so that I can mix it up with all these fun herbs and flavors before I fry it to a crisp. It's gonna be yummy. So while we're waiting for the quinoa to cool, I'm just gonna prep everything that's gonna go inside of it. Like the green onions, oregano, some parsley, lemon, and my vegan butter. <laughs> so I love this new vegan butter that I started to use um, just because it is soy free. It cooks to me like regular butter does, but there's no soy like other brands that I've used in the past. And I can recognize all the ingredients on the back. The quinoa's cooled a bit. It's still a little steam there, but I'm impatient. If you wanna wait, you can put it in the fridge to chill. Just gonna literally take the herbs that we chopped up, the green onion, thyme, oregano, and parsley, and just give it a good stir, a good sweep of lemon. Some of this butter. garlic salt because what's better than regular salt garlic salt <laughs> Facts. I think when I first started cooking a lot of folks in my family would reach for the salt shaker before they even started to eat <laughs> it's funny now because like my auntie Lynn I know she's watching I know she'll be like "Ooh, I remember that so just adding a little dried parsley Got it fresh and then just literally let it air dry. It was great. I wanted to thicken the gravy of my black eyed peas, but I didn't have any cornstarch or roux and I wanted it to be gluten free. So, you're just gonna take the liquid from your black eyed peas and I just wanna add enough so that I can make a paste with the chickpea flour and then I'm gonna add it right back in and it will thicken up. If I add the chickpea flour directly to the liquid, it'll kind of clump up and look really unappealing and create this texture that is not tasty. So the best way to do it is to take the liquid out from your stew, add it to your flour of choice, and then add it back, and then we'll thicken it up. There we go. It looks good, like a slurry. Cool, so now we can just add this thickened mixture back to the pot. See when you can start to see like the bubbles like that? Our liquid's reduced as far as it can reduce. So it's time to either take it off the pot or add some more liquid and seasonings if it needs to keep cooking. But the peas is done. So I'm back got me some black lava salt because he's the bomb. I'm just adding some black salt to this quinoa. It'll give it another level of flavor. Once your warm quinoa to your liking, flavored it, everything's singing to you, everything tastes right, just start forming some patties. I recommend refrigerating your quinoa once everything's all together. Form your balls first and then refrigerate those for about 15 minutes to an hour because then it'll hold a lot better when you cook them and it'll form even more of that perfect sear on top. Form that bad boy like a hamburger. Boil your pan and let's start frying these bad boys. Oh my god, everything's almost done. So, the main key, like with these quinoa cakes, is patience. Ain't nobody got time for that. Which I lack. So, this is gonna be a test of Danny's patience, and you're in the front row seat for that. <laughs> Do you know why the key is patience? 
because you legit need to wait at least five minutes for each side of these quinoa cakes to brown. Um, and if you try to flip them beforehand, they will break apart. So, get you something to flatten it. I'm using my mint tea container because why not? And let it literally sit. I'm even gonna set the timer. A perfect before and after. I like to use smaller plates so it looks like I'm eating more than I am. <laughs> no, but seriously, my eyes are usually too big for my stomach, so using a smaller plate helps me to portion correctly. So my quinoa cake, this is a really good one. It broke. That's why I recommend to cool your quinoa cakes first. Oh, so long. Oh, and the greens are so perfectly wilted. It's truly like a set it and forget it situation. Stir it occasionally, but just let those things cook. Happy New Year. Let's see how it tastes though, because that's the real test, right? <laughs> There's always a truck backing up outside of my apartment, so don't mind that. And then the black eyed peas have a nice amount of like hearty flavor with no meat. It's a good texture from the crisp. And then you get like that smokiness from the black eyed peas. Mm. Mm. And then the greens are like super vinegary and smoky. Mm, I'm happy. Happy New Year! Now let me go eat in peace. <laughs> I want to thank all of you for taking the time to watch me make food, which is one of my favorite things to do. And I just want to encourage everyone to like, comment, and subscribe because I'm going to just be creating more content. A lot of it's going to be food related, but there'll also be some great um, like DIY and healthy things. So, you know, come on, subscribe, be part of the fam, get with it. You already know you like my quirky self anyway, so come on. <laughs> but no, seriously, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe. Peace. Happy New Year. <laughs>